So what's your big problem this morning, my love? I think what? What's your big problem this morning? Oh, I've physioed it. We have no electricity. Oh, right. Okay. Nothing at all. Now, he did explain to me. First of all, there's a box above the top in case there's a socket or something that's not working. Now, as you look, you'd say, ooh, well, that looks quite modern. Well, to be honest, it is. But then, he said, if that doesn't work, I want to show you the electrics that are in this house. Because you'll kind of look and go, oh, that don't look so clever. So the electric box is here. <laughs> yeah, that third world. Now, as you can see, the actual uh, thing isn't going round. Ticker, I can hear it ticking. So it sounds to me as though it's got electric coming to it. Okay. So maybe we have got electric going to here. So what's blown then, we shall have to see. So we're on a bit of a mission this morning to try and get the house back up again. Hi, we're Caroline and Ian, a British couple who've left the UK, given up work, and now are in Bulgaria where we've just bought a property. So come and join us, see how Christian faith, van life, and a new house work together <laughs> on, on a, a wing and a prayer. prayer. winter um, and we paid for it and it gets subsidised I'll tell you how much it is because I've forgotten um, so they said you probably need about six cubic square metres to take you over winter so I've just run up the stairs look what has arrived £230 and this is our winter fuel we kind of didn't expect it to come uncut so Ian's going to have to get his chainsaw working I'll show you how they do it
such hard work. I am sweating like Billio. I've got too close to the um, chainsaw picking up the wood. I'm absolutely covered. <laughs> But um, the guy's a Trojan, I've told him to stop and have a beer or a can of pop and he's still cracking on. But we've got quite a nice rhythm going now. So he's chopping, we're loading the wheelbarrow and starting to pack it up. So it's all going well. We've still got loads to go and it's all got to be split. <laughs> <laughs> well, my love, how things suddenly change. We were supposed to be going for a nice walk into the hills to have a look, see what's up the road and everything. We had it all planned. <laughs> I've got a slow pork casserole cookie we were going to have when we come back, and suddenly the day turns into this episode. Yeah, so uh, next minute that lorry turned up. Now then, we, now what we've done is we've sorted out the bigger pieces from the smaller pieces. So the smaller ones, I should be able to chop myself. Maybe not. I don't know. We'll have to see how that goes. And uh, we've got rid of all that pile down to that size. I have opened the gates at the other side in order to put a few more, put a bit of a pile over there. But when they come down to split them, which is uh, Christo's going to get somebody to come and split these. I just don't know where we're going to put them. Obviously, once they're split, they're going to be all they'll be all over the place. So it's a lot of wood. I, th I think, my love, we should have just gone for a walk. <laughs> <laughs> if the lorry had turned up, we wouldn't have been here. <laughs> um, happy Saturday. Happy Saturday. <laughs> All the wood's been cleared from that pile and now it's been split on this pile. This guy here is incredible. Massive great big trunk of tree. Just splits in one swoop. Ian's then handballing it all in. I'm just making a load of food for him. Keep his energy up and also clearing all the rubbish away. Well, all of that wood was dropped off at 11.30 this morning. That was six cubic square meters of wood. And in 11, from 11.30, it was unloaded there. Then a chap came, he chopped it into big pieces then another chap came and has chopped it all into smaller pieces. This is only a portion of it. The rest of it has all been stored already. We've run out of storage and there's still another pile over there. It's now 5.30. The lovely young lad who chopped the wood has had tea with us. Had a very large tip for doing so well. And now we just need to stack up the rest of this last bits, and we're done. Six hours, start I to get finish. A large tip. Yeah, <laughs> Mr. A wants a large tip. <laughs> oh, I'll have to think of something inventive. <laughs> Cheese grate on my back. Oh, <laughs> oh, he has worked hard. This boy's going to get a cup of tea in bed, big lie in, and um, yes. I love him very, very much. Well done, Mr A. Well, you've done your bit as well. You've been very busy, my love. Thank you for acknowledging that as well. Yeah, you've been moving all this. I have. Not done it all of your own. No, we do it with style. And Delilah's been not one inch of help whatsoever. Yeah. Well, what a lovely Sunday it is. So the weather had gone a little bit chilly down to five, but today it's beautiful in the sunshine, really blue skies and nice. Now we cracked on yesterday, we worked really, really hard. I think we did six hours um, and we're still moving and we're still walking and we've still got all our fingers. Mr. Ray's still got two legs <clears throat> and uh, yeah, we're going to crack on today and finish off this wood uh, business. So I'll just show you where we're up to. 
The gate is now shut, so all those massive pieces of locks have been moved. We have a supply down there because the drive was just getting so full it was unsafe for the, the lad to chop them. So they are going to be trundled tidily into there to keep them dry. That then just leaves this lot. <laughs> So we've split them in piles because um, Ian's quite happy to split this lot. It's um, softer wood. But I do not want this lot on my front drive because this is the only bit in the morning that gets all the sunshine. And so I would like to sit out here. Plus behind there is the most beautiful little wall that we sit and talk on. And it's a happy wall and I don't want it covering up. So all that said... Mr. A? Well, it's like the porridge pot. <laughs> it just doesn't disappear. <laughs> yeah. I think you're right. So I have a plan and I'm going to move as much as I possibly can. And we still have some space in the wood store. Now, I've sussed out why Ian hasn't done this. And that was because it was absolutely covered. Can you see all those spider webs in spider webs? Just as I don't like snakes, Ian hates spiders. So this is how far we've got. This is, is it three layers thick, Ian? I think it's three layers thick, that. Got all of this. And then my job today is to start packing as much as I can down there and see how far we get. And I suppose we've got that bit of wall. Our worry is, obviously, it's got to be stacked safe because... It could cause a horrible damage if it fell on you. So, happy Sunday. Let's crack on. So, we've got a bit of a um, routine going now. Ian brings the barrel loads for me. Put them down here so that they're handy. And we've managed to clear an absolute load. So, what I've done is I've got... Full rows of the small brick and um, sticks there at the back, and then I'm just starting on the split wood here. But I'm really, really proud. I think I found my niche in life as a wood stacker, and it's looking better out here. So we've managed to clear all of that that was down that end. That's now under the stairs. We're just starting to clear this, but we're not going to get very, very much of that in. And as usual, Delilah's been her helpful self, giving us advice, telling us when we've gone wrong. And then I've made an extra space over the side of the... Shall we go and have shed. a look? Let's have a look, love. Well, you can't see it very well because I've been busy doing... I know, you've been stuff. trundling. I've cleared all the undergrowth and stuff along that wall there. Okay, so this is the... And I'm going to put them against that wall. You can't. Why is that? Because they'll get wet. They've got to go under a roof. Sorry, love. Well, no, I'll put a couple of pallets on it and then put some wood over the top. Okay. Mr A's project, I am not going to say anything until right. it's done. I will hold my opinion to myself. You hold your opinions to yourself. Love. Which is most <laughs> unusual for me, apparently. <laughs> You're nearly always right. Oh, that's <laughs> very generous of you. Oh, Delilah's on the move. So, crack on part two. This morning, Mr. A is having a very large breakfast because he is a man on a mission. So today we are embarking on an adventure. What are you up to today? Well, I'm going for a walk, aren't I? No, you've got a job to do. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to go and save our house from a... Pine Martin. You sound like a bird, don't they? No, they're about the size of a cat. I'll put a picture of them. I've got nasty big teeth. <laughs> <laughs> and claws. Yep. And we've got some fireworks left over from um, from New Year. So we don't know as it's let a couple of them rip that things off. Just... So Ian had heard scurrying in the attic. Now remember, this is a concrete house. So... It had to be quite big 
to be able to hear it through the concrete. But about eight o'clock every morning, we'd hear this scurrying above our bed in the roof space. Anyway, we assumed because we'd seen the black squirrels that it was a black squirrel. And then this morning, I was lying in bed and I heard it go across and I thought, oh, there it goes. And then when I was sat up in bed, I looked across and the wind, the, the, the door that goes onto the balcony is glass. And I thought it was a cat. So all I could see was this back end and this long tail of a sort of gingery red coloured thing. Anyway, when we've looked it up, it's Pine Martins. They are used to being in this area. They say they are very ferocious and vicious. They normally are solitary animals, which is great. Um, the only problem is that they can bring dead animals back into the house if it's a mother that's feeding the young. The problem with that then is you'll get hordes and hordes of flies up there. It's got in the last place. <laughs> <laughs> So we're going to get Mr. A all protected up as best we can. <laughs> I've got some swimming goggles. <laughs> and we're going to send him up the loft space for an investigation only at this point. The spiders up there, more bothered about them. No, I've, cl I've cleared the spiders, you say. Ian has now taken matters into his own hands. He's increased the security. <laughs> He's now got a broom. He's also added gloves. We've, we've tied the string round his trouser legs. <laughs> I mean, it may look silly, but apparently they're quite ferocious, these animals. Oh, sorry, I shouldn't say. <laughs> <laughs> Here he goes. It's making a lot of <laughs> Stop it, you dumb thing! <laughs> so it's carpet wasn't here before. No, there was no carpet. It's not brought a carpet in. <laughs> there was definitely no carpet up there before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll pass that up to you when you get on. Oh, I'll help you in with this. So one of the problems that they said if you get house martins up here, pine martins, sorry, is um, flies from the debris. This window is covered. There must be hundreds and hundreds of flies. <coughs> Ian's trying to open it to let them all out. Wow. I think he's still letting them out. I'm just going to let them in. So it Probably looks why so many round there in the, in the house. Yeah, it looks like we definitely get. So I think it's shredding bed in here. So and this this looks like it's been um, wadding from somewhere that's been shredded. So it's obviously starting to nest. So we need to get it out before it has babies. Because we couldn't move it once it's got babies. But this is where we hear it, over this side. Near our bed. Round that corner. Ah, oh, oh, there's a hole here, Ian, up by the chimney. Right. That's letting the light in. It could, yeah, that looks like a very obvious way. And then, and we've been trying to get a walk in now for three days, and every day something's happened. But today, no disasters have befallen us. No wood has been delivered, and we are out on our walk. So the aim of the walk is obviously come summer. Um, we want to find a, a, a watering hole that I can swim in and Ian can paddleboard in. So this is literally. Um, five minute walk from the house so there's a, a main path up there we've just managed to clamber down here which is not too bad but then we haven't got the paddle board on our backs and we found this area so it's really quite flat so we can sit and set up the board it looks great for a picnic as well so we're just going to go down <laughs> oh what's that is that an animal Oh no, there's somebody over there. 
Oh, there's a guy over there fishing. So just coming down to have a look whether we could enter the water from this area. And yeah, I think we definitely could enter the water from here. Could do. Yeah. Oh, look at the reflections in the water. Yeah, I think this is a great spot, Ian. And this is five minute walk from the house. The water's very, very still. Oh, there's a guy going fishing. Fairly deep, isn't it? Yeah, it's lovely. Oh, welcome to our new recreation ground. Isn't that great when the trees are upside down in the water? Upside down. Do you think it's going to be good? The trees are upside down, what's that? The reflections. Oh. <laughs> Duh. So we've come out onto the into a different part of the village and Caroline's saying she's already done a bit so that'll be the video that's just before this one and uh, I was saying that uh, you know that it just if you look this way and as well as my lovely lady being there is this just reminds us of Morley Common up at Moor it's just uh, you know that kind of scrubland thing but yet at the same time with the with the feeling of the wilderness so this is the back end of the village which we haven't been to before and Delilah's loving it she's part of this water now this river we think actually goes round and goes to where the bridge is so it's a circular and we think that it goes like it cuts the cuts the whole of Baronavo in, in in two sides. So you've got water on one side and water on the other. So we're going to have a look. It's just so lovely and peaceful. Absolutely beautiful. And there are a few quite modern houses on this side. As you can see that one there. There's also another one over there. Not been to that side of the town yet, so, uh, so we're exploring new areas at the moment. We haven't been getting out much because of the work that we've been doing. But now, now we can explore a bit and Madam can get a new jumper out. She made that, you know. So we've been here now just exactly a month today. So we came over January the 23rd and obviously with the grease and one thing or another and then getting the keys so um, time in uh, Bulgaria is starting to uh, to run out unfortunately so because we've done quite a bit of work we decided that we'd have a little treat <laughs> He actually left this spa, very nice. So thank you to Christopher and Tracy for leaving the spa here. 